after all the movies I have watched, the few books I have read, and the plethora of games I have played, I never felt more emotionally invested in a story and its characters as the ones of a Plague Tale franchise. To say I'm a fan is an understatement. Both a Plague Tale Innocence and a Plague Tale Requiem check all the boxes for me, but its most appealing factor would be its female lead. You see, I never identified myself more closely with anyone as with her. So why is that? What makes her such a special, unique and strong character? Well, to solve that, we have to take a deep dive. Introducing... Actually, she can do that herself. I'm Amicia Jerome! Before we talk about Amisha the Rune, we have to talk a bit about the games themselves, as well as their general plot. Now, this would also be the point where a spoiler warning would be in place. Both games tell the story of two siblings, the older sister being Amicia the Rune and her younger brother being Hugo the Rune. The two children, being 15 and 5 years old at the start of the first game, have to survive the hard world of 14th century plague infested France. But that's not all. Early in the story we are told that Hugo has a strange ominous sickness called the macula and somehow this is connected to the plague Lucas Yes What does he have in his blood There's an old story It tells of the prima macula The alchemist said it was the first corruption and that it silently travels in the blood of certain families but Something happened, the great break, and the macula awoke, in Hugo's blood. Knowing this, the two siblings, together with the handful of friends they make along the way, start their journey in finding a cure for Hugo. Gameplay-wise, A Plague Tale Innocence and Requiem are classified as stealth games. As its name implies, stealth is heavily favored over open combat. As such, a player should find its way around an enemy, instead of openly engaging with it, for the player might get easily surrounded and overpowered, leading to... <laughs> well, yeah... Anyway, looking at our characters, this gameplay decision makes sense. Emisia might be a fighter in spirit, but in the end, she still is a 15-year-old girl. Being sneaky would greatly improve her chances of survivability. But this doesn't really sound brave, heroic or strong, does it? So what makes her such a strong character then? Amicia's strong personality can be attributed to multiple factors, the first of which are all the horrors that she is subjected to. Let's be clear, both games have their fair share of horrific and messed up imagery, and they're not afraid to show it. Seeing your dog being badly mutilated is the least of your problems compared to a field littered with fallen soldiers, or streets filled with the half-eaten corpses of innocent victims. Seeing these scenes as an adult would already result in some major trauma. But here, we are talking about a 15-year-old girl, and yet she never backs down. After seeing all this horror, Emisia always finds the strength to keep going, which makes her one of the strongest 15-year-olds I have ever seen in media 
altogether. But surprisingly, this strength isn't mainly fueled by self-preservation. Amicia's strongest drive is the survival of her brother. As she states herself, I don't care about them. I kneel to no lord, Sophia. No count, no king, no one. I only care about him. This drives her to withstand all the horrors that both men and rats can throw at her, making her even more lovable and strong as a protagonist. But we see these selfless attributes in many heroes. So what's the difference here? Fear. Often the hero of the story shows very little fear towards the dangerous situation they might find themselves in. The developers of A Plague Tale did the exact opposite. They make it very clear that Amisha is scared to her core during the most part of the story. This cutscene for example very clearly shows the fear Amisha is experiencing by accentuating her feared expression. But we aren't limited to cutscenes. Oh no! I was so scared! Don't you go. Don't take him away. The voice acting during gameplay constantly reminds us of this emotion. Charlotte McBurney, who lends her voice to Emisia, has spoken many times about her favorite part voicing Emisia and the intensity that comes with it. Uh, I think the hardest part was like trying to lose the emotion because it starts off so emotionally, and I'm a very emotional person. And so I was getting very distressed about everything throughout the game. Yet, the most ingenious way of conveying fear isn't a cutscene or a voice line. It's a sound. While playing the more intense parts of A Plague Tale, you can constantly hear the deep, irregular breathing of Amicia. While never realizing it, as a player you are constantly reminded by the fear Amicia experiences thanks to this sound. But what has fear to do with making a stronger character? Being scared clearly isn't heroic, brave or tough. Or is it? Whilst this emotion on its own isn't seen as those great values, pushing through this fear definitely is. As stated by many writers, the more hardship, pain, difficulty and trauma a character has to overcome, the stronger we will perceive that character. And as such, an emotion we see as weak actually contributes to how strong we might perceive a character, whilst also making them feel more human. Because let's be honest, <laughs> we would feel the same way. And this actually brings me to another point that makes Emisia so uniquely human in the video game and movie industry. Emisia. You, you killed him. Murder is a strange concept in video games and movies alike. We all know we shouldn't commit such a horrible act, yet in media its concept seems almost glorified. We can see our heroes gloriously fighting their way through hordes of enemies whilst not putting a second thought into murdering them. Think about Call of Duty for example. You don't have to play its story for that long before you commit your first murder. And even more so, your character doesn't seem to mind all that murdering at all. A Plague Tale and Amicia are quite different. The games don't prohibit you to kill a person, for murder is an essential part in its narrative. But the long-term effects of murder and violence are clearly shown, in contrast to games like Call of Duty. Amicia reacts very strongly when she commits a murder. The two best examples of which are found at the start of both games. Hugo, you'll never see her again. Oh, Daddy. Amicia. You... you're lying. 
They were killed at the house. Both of them. So shut up. You're lying. Lying. I hate you. Please stop. Hugo, no. Hugo, wait. Don't go out. You're mad. Hugo, come back. Here we find ourselves at the beginning of Innocence. In this sequence, your brother is attacked by an angry farmer. You as a player will instinctively sling a rock at him, after which you will just move on. It's just another kill, after all. Until this happens. No, let him go! So that's where you were. No, wait, wait, I... I, d I didn't want to. Hugo! I'm... I'm coming! The game pauses here for a second, and the camera is locked. As a result, the player, as well as Amicia, are forced to look at what they just did. Secondly, Amicia clearly reacts in disbelief and sorrow, giving the idea that she wasn't in control. Which... she wasn't. You were. As a result, the cruelty of killing is made very personal to the player here. And this is why this sequence is so masterfully crafted. It forces the player to feel the same guilt and disgust as Amicia. A different approach can be found at the start of Requiem. Here, your family is again ambushed by some angry farmers. In order to save her family, Emisia has to fight her way through a multitude of these farmers. Only afterwards, in the cutscenes, are we shown the damage that it inflicts on her. Hugo! He's still breathing. It's a shock. Emisia again reacts in sorrow, disbelief and disgust. Killing isn't glorified here. On the contrary, it is shown as a terrible thing, and Emisia agrees with this. Throughout the games there are a plethora of voice lines in which Emisia vocalizes her disgust towards murder, and herself for committing these murders. Forgive me for the evil I have just committed. How many have you... I don't even want to count. But I don't feel terrible and that's what scares me. I did everything I could to protect him. Even horrible things. I've never seen you do that. I don't like it. But I always end up having to do it. I did it for him. And I'll kill you again if I have to. I'll kill all of you! However, there is one exception. In Requiem, Emisia loses control over herself once. You say that nothing, nothing to be scared of. Alicia, what are you doing? We have to go. No, I'm tired of being afraid. I'll show them there. that it's over. Pull you. Come, I'll give you what you want. He has a shield. Oh, be careful. How'd you like that, huh? When someone fights back. They're too yeah. bad, Alicia. That's all It'll you blind got. them. Come on. Here, the roles seem to have been reversed. Suddenly, the player is forced to follow Amicia's orders. And this leads to a very different reaction for most players as, say, your first kill in Innocence. You guys... She's blaming herself. You have to survive, though. It's the only way. Amicia, I'm a little scared of you. I will kill this man. I won't even hesitate. No, vengeance is bad. Where the first kill is easily justified by many, here Amicia has to quote, chill out. And when she finally does, she and we as players finally realize how bad her mental state actually is. I don't know what's happening to me, Lucas. I, I feel my mind going. Trauma is a subject that in recent years has grown in importance. Sadly, there are not that many examples of video game characters that are coping with trauma. In A Plague Tale, trauma is a main part of its narrative. Next to seemingly having to fight the entire world, Amicia also has to fight her own trauma. But how accurate is that fight? 
To understand that question, I have linked up with Laura Sanna, a music therapist who specializes in working with teens and children. However, before we can take a deeper look at Amicia's fight against trauma, we have to understand what it actually is. According to the regulations, trauma, or a traumatic experience, is an experience that happens to you as a person, or you are an eyewitness and see it happening to someone else. This experience has to be life-threatening, physically harmful, or be sexual abuse. In practice, however, there are a lot of exceptions. It is possible we see other traumata or other traumatic experiences. Uh, for example, a divorce, even a divorce without violence, can be something really traumatic. In A Plague Tale, we find numerous examples of potential traumatic experiences. The first of which might be the passing of your dog. While it's hard to say if this experience is traumatic or not, it's definitely a stressful one for Amicia. The first of many in fact. And this unending series of stressful events is important. You see, a stressful experience triggers the production of cortisol, the hormone that makes you stressed. On the other hand, cortisol triggers your memories. As such, you can learn from these experiences. However... That system can dysregulate when it's overused, which makes it harder to learn from stressful events. And then we get a lot of different responses that might be related to post-traumatic stress disorder. As such, a plague tale makes it very plausible for Amicia to develop PTSD. But does she? While Amicia shows some necessary symptoms of PTSD, it is actually really difficult to diagnose her. Does she have PTSD? It's difficult to say again because we're still in a lot of traumatic experiences and um, saying that someone has PTSD is most possible when they're not in a traumatic experience anymore. When they have time to rest, get into a normal situation and have abnormal reactions in a normal situation. So we can s the only thing we can see here is we can see factors that would make her more susceptible to get PT or to develop PTSD afterwards. Until now, we only had praise for how Asobo Studios tackles trauma in A Plague Tale. Yet, sadly, not everything is portrayed hyper-realistically, as Emisia shows some unusual, yet plausible, reactions. A good example of which can be seen here. Touch the house. To be honest, I don't think a lot of people will react like she did. I think a lot of people will scream or will flight real a lot faster. And I miss that a bit in this scene, like that feeling of rush that you have when there is a high stressful response. So to clarify then, is it unrealistic? I don't think it's unrealistic because nothing is unrealistic when it comes to psychological reactions. But I don't think this is a quite common reaction, no. After speaking with Laura for over three hours, we concluded that, yes, a plague tale depicts trauma in a realistic manner. But the question remains, does this make her a stronger, more relatable character? While Laura praises the games for their good job, she thinks that this can be attributed to something else. Because the player is an empathic person and because Amisha is a character that enables you to be empathic with, that's because she feels so close. Not because her trauma is depicted beautifully to reality, not because you feel sorry for her, but you envision yourself in her place. So there's a lot of room for your own play in 
the gameplay they beat you. They they beat you. <laughs> they give you. And I think that's more the answer that you're seeking. Yes, because this world hurts. And it keeps hurting. And you want to hurt it back. But it's a fight you can't win me. While A Plague Tale Innocence is the first story-driven game from Asobo Studio, they absolutely nailed it when they made a 15-year-old girl feel like an unstoppable force, never feeling like it's unrealistic. We see her moments of strength, but we also see her moments of pain, weakness, selfishness and trauma. As such, during the 30-ish hours you play as her, you can only feel drawn and connected to this amazing girl. So is this the way then? Do we have to show characters with all their problems? Do we have to show characters who are battling extensive trauma? Or do people just want to see these fairy tale heroes who seem to be perfect? My opinion is simple. While these fairy tale heroes are nice to watch on a Friday Eve after a hard day, Characters like Emisia might ask some more work to get to love. But they will reward you with a deep emotional connection that you will simply not find anywhere else. <laughs>